next gen item is the citizens recognition. We have had one person to ask to speak, uh, and anyone who wishes to speak with the commission and get my <coughs> if you will come up and tell the first name of your topic, and we will call on you. At this time, the only one that signed up is Richard. He is president of the Freedom County Chamber. Here or here? Yeah, great. Yeah, like you. Well, I'll stand here since everybody's back here with you. It's a great night. You talk about a dynamo. We've got two new dynamos with us tonight. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Stuart Hare, who is our new manager of existing industries, our newest member of the economic development team. So we're very glad to have you. Stuart comes to us from uh, the North Carolina Department of Commerce, where he was the, uh, let me get, get straight that out, he was with existing industry. Coordinator. Okay. And in that capacity, he is no stranger to the community because he worked with Ian very, very closely on several projects here in Cleveland County. So he's used to Cleveland County, does a lot of manufacturers already. So we're just glad to have him on board. He comes to us also from uh, Salt Bay Rowan County, where he was also a project manager over there. So he's handled some new business, new industry projects as well as the existing. So he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's also a member through uh, the ED Institute at the University of Oklahoma. So he's got the educational background, has a master's degree in geography with a focus on economic development. Uh, so we are very, very glad to have him. And uh, with, with the new other dynamo that we have coming forward with us, Jeff, welcome. Thank and you, glad to have you. Thank you. We look forward to uh, continued explosion in our economic development program. So, sure, I'll let you. I just want to thank y'all for this opportunity. I'm very excited to be here in Cleveland County and uh, look forward to adding to the success that uh, Michael and Kristen and the rest of the economic development teams have been able to bring. And I think that uh, we have a great foundation and uh, great potential a lot moving forward on uh, the successes that are already here. And uh, from the existing industry standpoint, it uh, kind of feels nice because they have landed some great uh, uh, companies and uh, have some great uh, expansions already. And so I can uh, add to that and bring additional value, I think, to the community. So, very excited about this opportunity. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you, Joe. Come see us. Yes, sir. I'll be happy. Thank you. And we're going to leave now and go to the ballpark. We're going to get in uniform. Yeah, got the white shirt. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Actually, uh, Shelby High School, but we wanted to come, I want you to go back in time 
to March 1, 2011. Uh, the Abuse Prevention Council came before you and asked for land to build a new women's shelter. David Deere had worked very closely with us. We went to David and first we asked about money to support it from the county. And he made the suggestion that maybe at that time you didn't have the money, but that you would be able to give us land. And the land that you gave us was a plot of land out there at the Dunlow Mill and on the home going out of Shelby at, at the Eagles. And uh, at that time, we presented you plans to build a $3.2 million new shelter. There was going to be a five-year period. Um, a capital campaign, and we're just really excited. Well, the next year, we had a visit from the, um, the person who represents two of our major funded sources, the North Carolina Council for Women and the Governor's Crime Commission. And they really wanted us to move <coughs> forward faster on the new shelter because they were concerned about where the women's shelter is there on North Washington uh, because of safety and privacy. And the building that they were in was never designed to house that many to house women and children. It was designed more as a business. Well, at that time, we had to change our plans because in order to, to utilize the plot of ground that you so graciously allowed us to use, was going to take at least a year to get the site ready because we had a road to close, we had to move utility poles. We learned quite a bit about that type of um, infrastructure whenever you're building the shelter. Well, we have a plot of land over in front of, um, it's on Wendover, and it's front of uh, the um, hospice there in, in Shelby. So we have dropped back and hunted with our building committee, and we have now, our building is going to be one point um, six hundred well, one one million six hundred fifty thousand dollars to build. Um, and we have, we wanted to wait and come to you whenever we were in the time to tell you about money we have raised so far. But uh, before we do that, Kathy has got a video and we want to show that right now. And then we'll talk to you about the sheets as the mouse is in front of you. But this is our video if you would please look. Well it's a little bit which is in dire need of a new shelter. Uh, the shelter that we have right now is just in very bad condition. It's very small. It does not accommodate, it does not make for a family to come and feel uh, like they have their own space. The Clinton County Abuse Prevention Council has been helping women and children survive domestic violence and sexual assault for over 28 years. So we have women in this county who would prefer to go back to an abusive situation in the same county. ABC is committed to providing safe shelter, advocacy, and supportive services for victims of domestic violence, rape, sexual assault, and the homeless, thus empowering them to make the transition from victim to survivor. One of the biggest issues is our shelter wasn't actually built to be a shelter. From what I've heard, years ago it was actually an electronic store. Over the past years, APC's Women and Children Shelter has fallen into disrepair due to overuse. Well, what makes us need a new shelter immediately is that um, our grant force said that the shelter is not good enough, and uh, so they are the people who provide the money for our programs. Um, if we don't do what they need for us to do, then we'll have money for programs and we'll have a shelter that doesn't have it. The reason why they find it not adequate and the reason why we know it's not adequate is that it's just not big enough. Um, there's no private space at all for our clients. They're all, we have two bedrooms, so one bedroom for singles and one bedroom for family just meeting in the same manner. Our clients don't have private space. They don't have a place to go and close the door and still be a family. So families have experienced huge disruption. People may come to us after having um, couch hop from home to home to home when they finally get to us they're in a room with lots of other people sleeping two feet away or less from people they've never met before. Um, we know that um, becoming homeless is traumatic for children and that children um, don't perform as well in school when they go through that trauma um, and, and that trauma lasts for them for a very long time. The kind of shelter that we have makes that situation even more traumatic. But 
because they were sisters of the family, one of the ability to have a living situation, and um, having to live with lots of people's rules, not just their own rules. Um, so it's not an ideal situation to make it close. Being homeless is not ideal for anyone. What we have right now is not even an ideal homeless situation. And we think that families deserve something better. And even though the shelter is in poor condition, we know that it is an invaluable resource for the community. It will be informative. When I first got here, you know, they hooked me up with a counselor who was like my case manager. And the that person, even when that person didn't know me, they were informative enough to share information in between the other case managers, and if they couldn't find anything there, they, you know, kept going up the, the ladder to find out different things and stuff. But they were able to guide me to all the different places that I needed as far as being able to establish and maintain housing as far as being able to get, um, how can I say it? Assistance for me and my children medical, um, food, financial, and even with the moving out process because I wasn't from here, they were able to have somebody come up to help me move my items because at that time I was maybe six, seven and a half months pregnant, so I didn't have to lift anything with me and four small children and one on the way.
you know, the little kids, the kids there, you know, might have a favorite teddy bear that you got to clean them and like, you know, the little kids look like toys. Um, they're big food, you know, we have them. That means a lot. That means people we'll have private space to where they could put up pictures or, you know, the kids could have their toys, whatever they can definitely. APC is struggling to maintain a shelter that is falling apart around victims' ears. With no privacy in the bedrooms and bathrooms, women find little comfort here. Children work on homework in an environment that is not conducive to learning, filled with distractions. How are these women to heal and move on to a better life when all they see around them are dark, crumbling walls? Now we are asking you to help us. Please join us by becoming a partner and make your contribution to APC today. Because we all know love shouldn't hurt. Thank you. 
raise fifteen thousand dollars and I'm living on my motorcycle. Ryan, give me his motorcycle All right, thank you all very much. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you for your group for helping you know, I, I also like to say, you know, uh, one of the things that's very important all commissioners is, is to work with people that are in need in our county. And, and uh, y'all work with people with, that are that are um, more in need than, than, than most uh, in a time where they're, they're um, going through a lot of the problems. Uh, so we really do appreciate your, your hearts and your desires and uh, opportunity for myself and you with good help. Um, I would be remiss if I did not make a comment tonight. Uh, we have about here for less than two young people here tonight, and if for Dan, we get to introduce them. Our next agenda item is a memorandum of understanding for the consolidated lake home and market deal with the MTO. First, I'd like to go apart and I'd like to speak to it, and then I'd like Commissioner Hutchins to speak to it. You're very well aware of this process that we've been going through over the last several months. And in fact, Keeping this whole and keeping 
one organization um, for, that we work with for our planning for our county. Thanks so much. Okay, any questions about this report or here none I like to have you know money to approve or deny and I would like to make a
objection that I call it a motion to adjourn. So they would vote to do it here. Second. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor, say right hand. We are going to vote.